another calm day in the English Channel. Uh, some more footage about to appear on your screen of scenes from Dover Harbour this morning. And it's a pretty consistent flow at the moment. Three, four hundred, five hundred people coming pretty much every single day. The big number, 872, achieved earlier in the week. And people are scrabbling around and desperately looking for solutions, including, of course, the government, who keep having some real trouble with the courts. Well, a proposal that has been put on the table today from Bright Blue, an independent think tank, uh, and its chief executive, Ryan Shorthouse, joins me. And you describe yourself as sort of the liberal wing of the conservative movement. So you've got four big recommendations that you're putting forward uh, to try and deal with this. And it's a problem that is making a lot of people in the country very, very angry indeed and posing a massive political threat to the Conservatives at the next election. Is that part of your thinking, that by doing these, by doing these things it would help your party? Well, I agree with you that, you know, a record number of asylum seekers came in 2022. It's, I think, around 70,000 estimated making a claim. That's totally unsustainable. And a lot of those people, about 50,000 of them, made dangerous journeys across the channel. That's not good for the country and it's not good for those people because they're risking their lives. So the question is, how do we bring that number down? Mm -hmm. And uh, the government has obviously implemented the Illegal Migration Act, and they want to detain and deport nearly all migrants. But, but it's not going to happen because the courts will never allow it because of our ECHR obligations. Well, actually, I think the main problem with it is that, you know, the detention capacity in this country is under 5,000, and we're talking about... 70,000 people coming. So, and we're not going to be able to deport all of those people, including to Rwanda, where the agreement is only about 1,000 migrants. Okay, so it's unrealistic to assume that all of these people will be detained and deported. So the question is, what do we do about it? Yep. So I think we need control and compassion. So my own view is that there needs to be some legal and safe routes for people who are not from particular countries. So at the moment, Ukraine and Afghanistan, you can come through resettlement routes, but we know there are countries like Iran, for example, um, which about a third of all asylum seekers coming into the UK come from, which is a dangerous country. Um, you know, perhaps the resettlement scheme, which uh, a branch of the UN does, where it selects people, maybe uh, we should set a quota for that in the UK to allow people who don't come from Afghanistan uh, and Ukraine What's to come number? through that route. I mean, I mean, the, and by the way, that, that route, um, the, the quota, we don't have that, which is unlike the US, the Can Canada and Australia, they do have a quota. What, numbers, what sort of numbers are you talking about? Uh, well, for example, we had, I think, about 5,000 come through that route in 2019. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I'm, I don't know a kind of set number that they should do, right. but it should be in line with other countries. But isn't there a problem? So that, that's one right, route. Right, but isn't there a problem here? Even if you have safe and legal routes yep. and people can apply, you know, not in this country, but elsewhere for a visa to come in because we think they've got a justifiable refugee claim. Yep. That's what you're proposing. Fine. But that doesn't stop the boats coming. Right. OK, so it won't. And I think, you know, we're not going to be able to stop the boats completely, but we can reduce them. And I think one part of that is working with France more to make sure that they intercept boats before they come over. Um, we don't have a the pushback, French... a maritime pushback policy, which well, the US and Greece have. That's... The Royal Navy won't do that. In now, country. Greece do implement a pushback policy, yeah. uh, albeit that end of the Mediterranean tends to be as flat as this table doesn't have big tides, so the risk to potential migrants is far less, also warmer water temperatures. You know, push back in the English Channel, you, we would lose a lot of people, wouldn't we? Uh, well, uh, there's, th I presume the Royal Navy are not intercepting for safety reasons is one part of it. The other is no returns uh, policy with another country. But I think really at the heart of it, Germany and France have many more asylum claims than we do, because, but because they of, process them quicker. Because of the Mediterranean. Because of the Mediterranean. You know, they haven't chosen to have more asylum claims. It's because of the Mediterranean, because of the EU policy. Processing. But processing is interesting. Now, we've heard stories. I, I can't believe they're true. Even if eight out of ten civil servants are working from home this week, given the weather. But 
We've heard stories that asylum case workers in the Home Office processing one claim a week. Is that actually true? I don't know, but I do know it's a problem in the UK that we don't process claims as quick as they do in Germany and France. And actually, our acceptance rate, I think, is quite high. So I think Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, really needs to be getting a grip on that, processing claims much quicker and making sure that our rejection rate is in line with our international... Um, well, that's interesting because, because Albania, 50% of people from Albania in the last couple of years have had their asylum claims accepted. Unbelievable. I mean, here we've got a country that's an applicant country to the European Union's a holiday destination, um, whereas in Germany, it was zero. In France, it was about 13%, I think. So, I mean, you could say one solution to it is just, just let everybody stay. But the real problem here, and the real problem with the boats, I think, is when people are rejected, we're not deporting them, are we? Well, that's a really good point. And I know in 2018 that I think there were about 8,000 uh, rejections, but only about 1,200 removals. And the reason for that, some people say, oh, it's the European Convention which is doing that. I actually think it's because there is no returns agreement in place with some countries, so it's very difficult to remove those people. Also, we don't have ID cards in this country, so it's very hard to track where some people go. So I think we need to be revisiting well, that the as well. Well, on the ID cards, I've, I've filmed for GB News them chucking their mobile phones an ID into the English Channel. So how does ID cards solve it? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not a kind of technical expert, but I do think that we, if we have better tracking of people and they wouldn't get lost in the system, in the black economy, I think that would be, that would be something that would be quite good. Well, we put tags on some of them and they just cut them off. I mean, the other thing which I think we need to think about is the Rwanda policy. Okay. So we've done some polling and the UK public are supportive of deporting people to Rwanda, but only when their asylum claim has been heard. So it's a kind of, you know, due process because people don't want to put everybody in the same so category. Basically, Let's hear them. send rejected people to Rwanda. Yes. And that would then, because, like I said, there's 8000 people in 2018 who uh, got rejected claims. Only 1000 were removed. Yeah. If we had this agreement with Rwanda, let's send the failed asylum seekers okay. to that safe right. country. And we do have an agreement with Rwanda. The problem is, at the heart of much of what you're saying is, is, is a deal with the French, isn't it? Yeah, I think there needs to be, you know, the French need to be equipped to better intercept and we need to work with them on that. And then well, let's look at some maritime pushback policies as well. But if they won't do it, if they won't sign a deal? Well, it's, it's about good diplomacy. And I know that you're not a massive fan of Rishi Sunak, but he does seem to be getting improved diplomacy in some things. For example, the Windsor framework. I don't know if you supported I know, that. It, 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 but he seems, and the horizon recently, yeah, no, he seems to be quite Diplomacy, when you give in, works amazingly well. <laughs> Ryan would agree to disagree, but the points you make are very interesting and part of this, an important part of this debate.